Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing. Um, uh, again, I come from the business community. Uh, my first job was with a union company, and I actually became the secretary treasurer of the Augusta Contractors Association, and I and, and, and negotiated the agreements and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, and, and frankly, back then, you know, we had people standing in line trying to get a job. <laughs> it was totally different. I mean, you could get as many workers, whatever you wanted. Uh, this modern workforce is very different. Uh, it's very entrepreneurial. Um, uh, companies, it's very, the workforce is very competitive. I mean, you've got to go find the workers, and you've got to compete. Uh, Georgia's been very good with that. Uh, we are the best state to do business in 10 years in a row. Um, and we've got a lot of, of uh, union members who are moving to Georgia. Now, are they moving to become workers? No, they're moving now to have their own concrete businesses, to have their own sheetrock businesses, to have their own painting companies. Uh, and uh, they're entrepreneurs. It's totally different. We used to self-perform 60% of our work. Today we self-perform maybe 5% of our work. Again, we're in an entrepreneurial modern workforce. Uh, Mr. Mix, a majority of states, in, in, including my home state of Georgia, have passed and have long-standing right-to-work laws, meaning that, and that, the simple fact here is, if you want to define that, what that means is you don't have to, ha to hold a job you don't have to pay union dues. It is just that simple. That's freedom. And uh, these laws provide workers for freedom to choose how to spend their hard-earned paychecks. Uh, many companies express interest in operating in right-to-work states. So, so, so why do we, <laughs> Mr. Mix, can you tell us why these companies want to move to right-to-work states and hire great workers in our states and train them? Well, Congressman, Georgia, as you mentioned, has been the top state for business for many years, I think a decade going, uh, according to CNBC and other folks that manage that. And it's because of your policies. But one of those policies is right to work. We know, as I mentioned earlier, the idea of people looking to expand, to invest, uh, consider right to work as a primary uh, kick out if you don't have it of a state. And so that's why we see manufacturing growth, you know, five times greater than forced unions in states and private sector growth nearly double. Look, talk about safety. We have, the, we have the lowest workers' comp rate in the country. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. 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 No, really. Um, obviously, um, the Biden NLRB has issued numerous decisions that undermine employer free choice and strengthen the labor union's ability uh, to force representation on uh, every worker. Yeah. Uh, the big labor and union bosses will stop at nothing to coerce American workers in the unionization, and obviously that's what this administration is trying to push. In fact, the uh, the PRO Act would do away with right to work laws in every state. In other words, you're going to equalize every state's ability to compete for business. So, what other legislative reforms can Congress consider to promote individual em employee? And of course. I, you know, I introduced the, uh, the Truth and Employment Act. Yeah. What other legislation can the Congress put forth to, um, uh, since this Congress is not doing anything, what can we do to help the worker? Well, Congressman, certainly there's probably plenty of things to do because it's the federal government that imposes this regime of forced unionism on the states. If we remember correctly, when they, when they upheld the Wagner Act in 1937, that imposed forced unionism on all the states across the country. It wasn't until 1947 when Congress came back in and said, you know, we probably should do something about this. We gave union officials dramatic powers over workers across the nation and imposed it on every right. state. So right. they allowed them to pass right to work laws. And as 27 states have done that, Michigan has already been mentioned, will uh, will lose their right to work law in February. But the idea of going into the National Labor Relations Act, the federal government's going to control private sector labor management relations, which they knew, do now. The states used to be experiments in, in policy as it related to, to employment and, and work policies. I would think that the National Labor Relations Act in general has to be looked at and let the states compete for workers and jobs and investment and cash by allowing them to take, you know, to take different ideas about it as opposed to having them preempted by the federal law yeah. that forces this compulsory regime down on the states. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I introduced the Employee Rights Act 
which includes a provision to ensure employees' political protection.